for Marin and Faker to make those 1v1 out plays, whereas Ku, it's much more about Gorilla roaming on the map, making plays together with Wisdom, and Gorilla, that's why he has such a high kill participation. He's uh, number four this season, and number two overall in assists. So let's take a look at these bands. Rumble coming in right away for Smeb against Marin. We're still on patch 512, so Callista definitely still at full power, at least relative to the nerfs that she'll see on 513. The bands come through, so Ezreal's been banned. It's a flex pick for SKT, so I always like these picks to take away a couple. Of course, you want it in the mid lane, but you default it to the bot lane if you have to, and Gragas actually respect her wisdom with that ban. The Mundo. I mean, SKT played it against Spenu, but it wasn't actually very impressive. I so wonder what they have in so much available. If you ban Mundo, you have to believe that there is going to be some sort of heavy AP priority from the Ku Tigers. That's usually what you would use to counter a Mundo pick. Corky first. We talked about how contested a pick that is between Bang and Prey. The Victor locked in immediately for Faker and the Rek'Sai for Bengi. So speaking of streaks, we'll be talking about them a lot. There's so many different ones to describe. The, the must-pick Corky or Silver streak continues for Prey, prioritizing it in the first round. We speculated that maybe it was time to bring back the Cogmore. Remember, the Ku Tigers are the grandfather of the Juggermore comp that saw so much play last season, but still such high priority on the Corky. It's been a big pick, but I don't know if it really justifies first pick status over a champion like Victor which has now been locked in by Faker. Well, you talked about it, though. If you pick the victor now, Faker gets a counter pick, and he has that tendency to play the Fizz, Fizz yep, in, uh, in solo queue. But the Fizz can still come out here. I guess Smeb is confident against facing that champion, Janna and Maokai. So they're taking, basically, they took the and one comp away from SKT. These are the champions that they've been relying on to get their wins so far uh, this year, really. And they took all of those champions away from SK Telecom. Of course, Gorilla, no slouch on Janna. Gorilla responsible for bringing Janna back into the meta. And Smeb, of course, a very good Maokai player in his own right. But SKT, what Ku is doing? They're feeling him out in this first game. Where are your champion pools going? How deep are they? And SKT going to respond as expected with a Fizz, but the Kogma a little bit different. It's a good laning matchup against the Cork. You can just sit back and free auto attack. Once you get a couple of points in your W, you're able to trade very, very well. And levels one to three, not ideal, but it gets better and better for the Cogmore. The surprise to me is that, okay, we talked about the importance of Gorilla's roaming, and you can roam on Jana, of course, she's very innately speedy, but doesn't quite have the CC or high damage presence of champions like Braum and Karma that he's really been favoring in recent weeks. Yeah, and we the Evelyn could come in, as could the Cassiopeia, something that we haven't really seen a lot of teams play recently. And Bengi will have that advantage with the Cassiopeia over the Evelyn. I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see Echo here. Uh, but Cassiopeia will be apparently Kuro's answer, a champion that not that many players have been playing except for uh, GBM, honestly. And so, Janair. The, the, the question about answers really comes from this draft is it feels like SKT, you know, they've got the winning matchups. They have the Fizz versus Maokai that we've seen consistently goes in the advantage of the Fizz. In the mid lane, you won't really feel like Cassiopeia is a hard counter. So Victor can have a good landing phase there. But Evelyn is always well answered by Rek'Sai and the Tremor Sense that comes through. So they were definitely always going to be trading priority picks, but it feels like SKT kind of have the ones that answer what Ku's been able to assemble on the blue side. Yeah, and you have to believe that Ku really needs needs a lane swap here in order to handle this situation as well as possible, uh, just because you really don't want Marin against that Maokai, and like you said, the Kogma against the Corky in the laning phase, so they have to have some other answer, and we'll see if they can pull it off. Of course, Wisdom has some very strong engage with the Maokai and the Evelyn. We've seen how good Wisdom is at pulling off these Evelyn flanks, but when it comes to a 5v5 fight in the late game, you have to hand the edge to the Ku Tigers. They've got sufficient peel for Corky and uh, and the Cassiopeia and SKT. I mean, that that Fizz just isn't that good in lane in team fights when you compare it to a Maokai. But are you telling me, Monte Cristo, that Ku had the advantage in late game team fights and SKT had the laning and skirmish advantage? <laughs> this is both teams playing into <laughs> their exact advantages, and that's what excites me. Is that? Okay, Team Fly's not that great for SKT, but how do you deal with the Fizz as Maokai, both in terms of the 1v1 matchup, which will come when teleports become important, or just in terms of rotating around in the early game? Yeah, and even then, too, Evelyn not giving the strongest kill pressure onto the Fizz either. That's why the, 
The Echo, I think, would have been a, perhaps a stronger option here. Nidalee would have been not necessarily a Wisdom Champion, yep. but a possibility as well. Surprising to see. All right, guys. Coot Tigers versus SK Telecom. Game one. Let's get in it. Well, somebody's game streak is going to end here. Somebody's best of three win streak will end later on in this broadcast as Ku starts with a pretty standard fan here. SKT not going to be taking any risks either. Will SKT make it to 21 and 0? That's the WrestleMania number I was thinking of before, Monte Cristo. <laughs> That's what The Undertaker got to. Of course, that was one match a year, so maybe not quite as equal a trade as we see. Bengi, Marin, Faker, happy family is SK Telecom T1, and when you win all the games, how can you not be happy? Yeah, they are certainly something else right now. Ku has a lot of work to do if they want to take out SKT. Prey actually taking some pretty severe harass damage early, but we see that Pulverize actually taken first by Wolf. A little bit safer in, with a Kog'Maw on the lane because you're not going to have to have that sustain early because you will win the poke trades. But traditionally we see uh, the triumphant roar, the heal at level one, just because, of course, you want to start pushing the lane, give yourself the potential to pick up level two, because that's the AoE damage. The minions, you just get the uh, relic shield proc and able to push lane a bit better. So you're a bit more pigeonhole, but of course, excellent for the invade, which SKT certainly considering their options to at least clear out these saplings. So f when he took the pulverize and got the chunk out of Corky, Corky had to recall, which means it was safe to go clear the saplings at the Raptors, so nice play there from SKT, immediately jumping on that opportunity. But the lane swap will come in for the Koo Tigers. They're gonna get the lane swap, which is what they wanted this situation. Corky not too late to freeze. And Janna heading over to the red buff right now, getting a ward down, just making sure they have an idea of what's going on. Meanwhile, ward was down for SKT at the enemy red, so they will know that Evelyn is starting Red and then heading up into the top side. Kuro taking the bad end of some death ray trades early. Interesting to see that Ku was starting on their weaker side, which definitely has been the standard that we've seen so far in Champions. But SKT starting on the stronger side. They were starting on the side where their AD carry already was. Of course, they're the teams that got lane swapped on, so it's not the biggest surprise, but it will affect the pathing when it comes to multiple members potentially in the bottom, top side. Yeah, and Marin already up in top, actually, after hitting level two. So taking that early teleport. Smeb just continuing the jungle follow for the moment. But bold, Wolf makes an early swap himself, while Gorilla and Prey just staying in that lane. Now, normally you want Corky in the 1v1 here, and you'd send the support somewhere else to help deal with this. But we're not going to see it. We'll have to see if Smeb took the blue buff or not. That's going to be the question as to whether he can easily break this freeze or how much trouble he's going to have against the Kog'Maw. So I'm sure we'll see what's going on down there in a second. In terms of matchups, actually, you know, the, these weird 1v1 matchups where we get a top laner versus an AD carry, then he's found by Wisdom, takes a bit of damage. How much does Kuro want to chase? Doesn't matter, he's able to get away. But coming down to bottom lane, the unique thing about this matchup is that Kog'Maw only really uses the bio -Kane Barrage in trades. He doesn't really spam spells like other champions, so he's going to be able to get Harass onto Maokai and not necessarily use enough spells to prop the Sap Magic passive. So it's actually, when we're talking about these weird off-lane 1v1s, a really good one for Kog'Maw. Yeah, especially because it's a 1v1. Corky has that escape mechanism in the top side, so leaving him alone is significantly less dangerous sure. than leaving the Kog'Maw uh, alone there. So if Janna's going to go down to the bottom side. Could see some action from the Twisted Advance, but Gorilla's sticking around top for now still. And Marin managing to pick up a decent amount of CS so far. We can see the win rates. Gorilla with that 81% win rate on Janna. And a lot of assists, of course, for Gorilla. He is second in the league behind Madlife. And Wolf number four for supports. So SKT are really not playing around Bane this game. And why I say that is, there's one defensive ward down. As we see, actually, Marin going in aggressively onto Prey, but just for a trade. There's one ward down. It's just a green ward. Remember, against Evelyn and with a targeted CC in Maokai, this Kog'Maw cannot really push up the lane. You mentioned doesn't have an escape like Corky if he was in a similar position. 
I'd expect Ku to play around bottom side, or SKT will have to swap back the moment the Wolf's free to put down a bit more defensive vision for the Cogma. Well, it's kind of what we expect, though, right? Uh, Prey is really responsible for a lot of the kills on the Ku Tigers, and they play around him as a more AD carry focused team, but. And so we see them with the support in that lane, but the support going up to the top side to help out with Marin because he needs to get CS now. He has to be able to get that Trinity Force to really threaten the Maokai. There's a specific power spike where you need to get those kills because if things go even, Maokai is vastly more useful in the late game in those team fights that will erupt around Dragon and Baron. So I think this is a wise call from SKT. Make sure the Fizz at least gets rolling a little bit and I guess the way to encapsulate that might be that Maokai is definitely more level reliant and Fizz is more item reliant. So if this gets Fizz the items, they're going to be okay. It's, it's a fairly even trade overall, but you're also getting Cogmore the free levels to get to that really safe level 9 phase where Biocane Barrage really maxes out in range. All right, both junglers in the top right now. Bengi coming through for a lane gank. They do not see him with the ward. It expires before he can walk into the next brush. Evelyn's still here. There's the Zephyr for the slow onto Wolf. No one really committing to this yet. Remember that the teleport can be used by Smeb. No, it can't be. It's down. So this is pretty safe for SKT. There's the ward. They're going to see Nazi Wisdom. Yeah, there's the pull. They don't know that Evelyn's here. Here comes Wisdom. There's a tornado going back, knocking several people up. Gorilla very low. That's first blood for Fizz. And that is not good for the Ku Tigers giving Fizz that advantage. Wisdom still chasing. He's going to try and take down Mar, and he gets it. Can they turn it around? Prey gets knocked up by the Pulverize. Bengi low, but so are Ku. Wisdom oh. barely lives through a Prey Seeker, and it actually hit Prey. It's not living up to its ability name. It's a Wisdom Seeker. A Wisdom Seeker. <laughs> yeah, it was surprisingly even trade. I thought SKT would have the advantage. They had the hard CC. They had the knockup. Teleport comes in, so in terms of rotation, in terms of picking up both experience and farm, SKT pick a lot up with that teleport. Yeah, they do, but we do see the Smeb recall. He is not going to have to TP in that top lane, so we could see Smeb try and make a play to get Prey further ahead. Kuro, of course, with the tier first, building into an Abyssal Scepter against Faker's Victor, and ooh, that's a nice delay on to Bang. Gonna get Corky some pressure in the laning phase, and Smeb, doesn't have to use that TP, so very interesting map control that Ku could assert soon if they try and make a play with that. So you can tell the SKT were engineering or expecting to have Marin in a 2v2 because he actually picked up the Dorans. He started Doran, but not any sort of regen start like a flask. He might actually have trade problems with Smeb in these very early levels before he's able to pick up big items. Okay with the Shin, he has good burst, but a lot of consistent damage coming out of a Maokai. Uh-oh, Gorilla gets caught, chilling Smite down, and he's going to get knocked around. That Tornado misses, but Wisdom is there Level with six. the ultimate. Here's the TP coming in. They want to make a play here. Heal goes down onto Bengi, but the Twisted Advance, Prey also moving up. A kill for Prey. They're going to get the blue buff too for sure now. And that is the play they were looking to make. Good hold on the teleport by Smeb to make that situation happen. But Marin now coming through. They may want to keep fighting this, but Wisdom just groups his five and heads back out. So interesting play. Looks like Smeb not going to lose too much CS in the top lane. They will punish Kuro a little bit for this, but a nice kill from Smeb. And the power of teleports. Of course, the teleport got Marin back up to top, so he picked up an extra wave, but it crucially got Ku a pick having that teleport advantage that wasn't up for that skirmish in top. So Ku definitely just kind of getting ahead in this early game phase. 500 gold ahead. That's big when we're talking about a game against SK Telecom T1. Right. And you, if you're SKT, you can't assume that Gorilla's there alone because they use so much of that crowd control to do nothing, and Wisdom was there to back him up. These are very good teams. They're unlikely to get caught out warding for the most part. You should assume that the jungler is going to be there, especially when it's an Evelyn that you can't see. Pink Ward not spotted by Ku when they're rotating to blue, so that means pretty precise time are going to be available for SK Telecom around the 14, 10 minute mark. But Smeb gets a blue buff. I mean, this is very important for how this is going to play out. He's going to be able to trade more efficiently. He already has the sustain. And we just mentioned, Marin doesn't have sustain. He's gone for the burst trade. So you feel like with this blue buff, just dis in disregard mana cost, might actually be able to get a slight advantage at top. They're trying to bait the all in right now. Marin not falling for it. Bengi is here, but the fish is already down. And there's Smeb. Just going to throw it, and they will get out as soon as they 
have a hint that Wisdom is there. Agony's Embrace wasn't available, but without that fish, and I don't know if they would have had the damage to actually kill the Maokai through his ult. Ignite also crucially only just came up after all that trading. Speaking of trading and bottom, continues between these two carries. Pretty big CS advantage for Bane, just because he's been left in a 1v1 lane for the early game. Yeah, also he has that range advantage to harass Prey, makes it a lot harder to CS. But the Rocket's up now, so should be getting a little bit better. Prey actually ahead, thanks to, looks like a missed petrifying ga gaze there. Both summoners down as well. Yeah, very interesting, had to flash. Not sure what Faker was doing in that situation. We only caught the tail end of it. Presented without context, that looked very bad for Yeah. The full, full HP, it looked like he tried to make a flash play to follow up with Wisdom and it just didn't work. So Faker has the Aftershock Augment, that E Augment for the Death Ray, able to push waves and roam. This has been what we saw actually yesterday. There was a lot of pushing waves and roaming against ABS. You're not quite the same case against Cassiopeia, but SKT, they start off the Dragon. Well, they saw Prey recalling. Marin's TP is up right now before Smeb, so this is a very good window for them to go ahead and take Dragon number one. They're going to get it. If Ku had come in, they could have had a 5v3 at any time, so calculated Dragon take from SK Telecom. Prey had to go back, get that Phage. So he's up in items against Bang now. We'll see if he can actually start to close this CS gap a little bit. This first 11 minutes, any indication of this series, definitely going to be a color car stream. How many times have we said windows and making smart map trades? <laughs> so far, we've seen both teams push ahead, understand what they have. Usually it's been teleports or recall timings and make smart adaptations. And the result is we're pretty much all even at 11 minutes into this game. Yeah, well, I think we're in for a treat of a game, that's for sure. Smeb has actually chipped out the top tower pretty significantly. He's managed to keep a hold of it. Bengi Kuro gets caught too far up. Kuro has nothing, no summoners. Tries to pop the ghost, but it's just not enough to get out. And Bengi with the smart gank move through the Raptor brush. Wolf's still there, they could dive. Wisdom right now, they want to go in again. There's the exhaust flash, and they're knocking it back in straight into the knock A beautiful dive from SKT. The juggling of the Tara aggro, full health Bengi getting the CC and being able to slip and slide away with his E. Beautiful play, and suddenly SKT playing around something they understood. They knew Koro's flash was still minutes away from being up. And Rek'Sai is one of those junglers. Okay, only a couple of units away from the turret. You think that would be safe? Not against a Rek'Sai. Yeah, it's starting to recall right on the pink ward where they know they will not be seen. So Wisdom thinking he could just sit there, but not accounting for the fact that Wolf was on the map ready to make the play and dive underneath that turret. I mean, it was a very safe dive. Had the unbreakable will even if he needed it, which he did not. So Big worry now. Boots, too. At least 20% CDR just from the visible. We're expecting probably CDR for level blues. Once you pick up that uh, Aftershock Augment on the E, you can push up Wave and Roam, and suddenly it feels like Kuro is going to be just relegated to farming under his inner turret, and Faker's going to be able to walk around, play basketball with his own ball, and just go around there and pick up CS after CS. We've seen Faker do this against Jin Air. No reason he can't do it again here. Yeah, he really has that tendency to take over games on Victor, uh, provide pressure onto turrets, and just auto-attack them to death. And if you try and get close to him, he even two, three members of the enemy team are often at a loss for how to remove him from auto-attacking towers because Victor has all that zone and the burst damage is so insane from that champion, you can't really effectively deal with him. Uh, Smeb still holding his own in the top side through all of this. Cassiopeia just has no real way at this present point in the game to make him a cannibal. He's going to be able to push waves. Cassio only has mana regen and magic resist. She's going to be under her inner turret, and that opens up Faker to either grow this CS advantage or impact the other lanes. Look at it now. It's 21 CS at 14 minutes. If this game stays with the same texture at 20 minutes, at 25 minutes, that lead is only going to grow larger. Yeah, SK Telecom now wandering through the tri brush. And Wisdom's going to show himself on the top side. They probably will get a kill onto Marin here, but there could be a big dive coming in through the bottom side. Marin not able to escape. Agony's Embrace will come through, and that's a kill for Smeb. But the price will be this bottom lane turret. It's going to go down from full HP to zero as Prey and Gorilla are going to be quite nervous about dealing with this. Actually, Smeb recalling right now. He has his TP up, and they're just going to leave Wisdom in the top side to push this turret and get the remaining HP. Great reaction from Ku after killing that top laner. 
and we'll get a really big purchase as well. Ninja Tabi into Righteous Glory completed. It's obviously a massive back there for Smeb. He didn't have any mana, so he wasn't able to push up the wave enough to really trade turrets. So they just decided smart to go pick up the big buy and be ready with the teleport. And there's that turret going down. No one going to get the local goal. Teleport coming in. And here we go. They're going in again. Bang alone in the bottom side. Smab coming in. Righteous Glory already bought. Bang is dead. Wolf and Bengi are here, but that's not going to be enough right now. Faker makes his way back down from the mid lane. Prey dies to the storm. Gravity Field, Gorilla looks like he's going to fall as well. There's no real help here. Kuro, can he get the Petrifying Gaze? No, gets knocked out by a headbutt, and they're just using it to retreat. So a nice move from Ku, but answered immediately by Marin's own TP, and Faker with a very early roam. It's and not over Smeb yet. is dead. No, That's Smeb. just it. Wisdom also going to get actually stunned here. Faker zoning him out. Faker near to the turret. He is going to get that kill eventually. Wow, so that got turned around very fast by SKT. Ku miscommunicating. Faker was already on his way down. And Ku didn't have any wards in their own jungle to see that one out. All the deep wards are for SKT. Now, while the proactive teleport from Smeb looked like it might reap some fruit for Ku, we have to remember what we said multiple times. Faker's the one that's always going to react faster because he's already taken out the outer turret. He has the instant wave clear, and he was tanking out the turret for the turret dive after one of his members had already gone down. So SKT understand they had a massive mobility advantage, and Ku paid the price. I mean, just his map presence was unreal right there, but that's what happens when you take down that early tier one mid, like you're saying, and Bengi can get those deep wards in. It makes it very safe for Faker to get down into the bottom side, and Kuro just not quite there yet. So a large lead developing, 3K gold here at 16 minutes, not insurmountable for Ku, but they're gonna have some big problems fighting here in the mid game. We're finally going to pick up this blue. Still, this ward has not been sweeped up. Maybe Gorilla will finally check it. Nope. Nope. Finally. Oh. Nope. I guess not. Forever. The most value in this ward. That it's been is, there since, what, four minutes? That's some crazy value. You don't expect a pink ward to be there, to be fair. But even so, walking over at Gorilla, looking at a different part of the map. It's nope. also been swept before. <laughs> Look at that pink eye just ruminating across the map and providing so much exact timing on things like Blue, which is relevant when you come to fight this dragon. You know that that team has just showed multiple members around the Blue not 20 seconds ago. Yeah, and Ku just can't even get any vision onto that objective. They are not going to be able to really do much with it. They are wise, I think, to wait at this point, try and get into that stage of the game where the tankiness of the Evelyn and the Maokai might be able to carry them through against the Fizz, but it's going to be difficult with this kind of deficit already accrued by the Ku Tigers. So it means you're opting into a late game Maokai versus Fizz mismatch in the off lane when we're waiting for the teleports. And just a late game Kogma, we know the terror of Kogma, actually the highest win rate champion, or among the highest win rate champions in the league, I believe 9 and 4 now out of 13 games. One of those AP from Faker, but mostly been AD carry uh, Kogma that's been showing a lot of winning. Yeah, it definitely has. So, Prey scared to take his own red buff right now. SKT in complete control of the bottom side. Bang so safe with Wolf and Bengi patrolling the enemy Bramble back right now. Smeb and Wisdom trying to make it through the tri brush. They won't see Wisdom, they will see Smeb. Applying so much pressure that, okay, it abates the Maokai versus Fizz mismatch. They're just losing objectives for just pressure on Tamarin, who from his smart teleport, is still doing very capably both in CS, 24 CS up, but very close to his Trinity Force and in general gold as well. Yeah, Speb doesn't have a lot of resists, and that's one of the, the issues with dealing with a Fizz, is that you have to have two different resists, magic resist and armor, to really efficiently deal with them. Now, they, they know Wisdom's there. They don't care, they're still going to invade that side of the map. Maybe finally they'll see the pink ward. Smeb with the glory coming through. There's a twisted advance onto Bengi. Agony's embrace goes through. They want this kill. Prey is also there. Smeb will pick it up. And that Maokai getting fed is very problematic for SKT. Yes, they have the lead, but that's the player that is going to be the big, big uh, kind of bear in the late game. Can they get a mid lane turret for it? May help their control, but Faker is there. Faker with that wave clear on his E. He's got the level advantage. 
And the determining factor in the late game might be can Ma uh, Smeb keep Myron accountable? Can he get enough items to be able to deal with him in the alpha lane? Because, of course, the targeted engage means that Maokai always going to be super tanky, always going to be relevant in team fights. If Myron can't boss him around the side lanes, maybe that's the window for Ku to really come back in this game. Very well could be. Well, Wisdom is getting some more wards down, doing a bit of counter jungling, now backing off. No, he's not. We go help out in top side alongside Wolf. Kuro here, still just trying to farm up. He's fallen 40 CS behind Faker, never mind the difference. Faker with the Echo, that's a very interesting buy. He didn't have enough on. wave clear before, so now he's got <laughs> even more instant wave clear, and that just means walk up, you know, within what, 400 units of a minion wave, instant clear it, and then you're free to go and rotate anywhere around the map. Game plan from SKT, not going to change in the next 10 minutes. Contest every objective. Yeah, you have to wonder about this Cassiopeia pick, too. It's It's been one of those champions where the mid lane seems to be falling out of a phase where you can actually use low wave clear champions early, because otherwise the invades get too severe and you open up the enemy mid laner too much. So Faker we're going to be using this Victor pretty effectively in the top lane now, just keeping all of the lanes pressured. And we've seen Faker do this before, not with an Echo as a second item after a Hexcore upgrade, but just the way that SKT likes to play this very high pressure style where they keep the enemy split up and they slowly, well not really slowly, quickly knock down towers. And the consistent factor about this Victor that, again, has been by far his most played champion this season hasn't been the item, but of course we thought he was pigeonholing himself into the Lich Bane for turrets, but he always picks for the situation. And given that they're winning this game by contesting specifically red and blue buffs, instant wave clear with that extra 100, 120 damage from the Ludens seems to be the priority, and it seems to be paying off. Yep, indeed. So, we're all back in a very uncomfortable situation, taking some... Uh, some uh, living artilleries, rather, underneath the mid turret. And even that turret's starting to get a bit chipped out by the damage, and he needs some help from Prey to clear. Ku just needs to hold on right now. They need to push it to a phase where they can actually get a successful 5v5, but the problem with that is SKT has got supremacy over the Dragon Pit right now, and they can just keep on stacking that objective as long as the mid and bottom lane remain pushed. Otherwise, Ku has to make some very uncomfortable decisions about how they're going to actually reach that objective. Faker is pushing out right now, gets about another quarter damage down onto that turret. So it is slowly dying as the stranglehold of SKT continues on the map. And your, question, your, your remark about questions comes back to Champion Select, where we said that SKT, at least in the laning phase, certainly had all the answers. Finally, Marin gets some free time with Smeb. Bang's actually there as well. Fish misses. And it's a small reprieve from Smeb, but still they're chasing. Yeah, they want to go for this. They're not really going to get much. Tier 1 tower is still there. So a summoner, but they have to commit both Faker and Bang into that top lane. As now... Ku still left with only the top side of the map. Ooh, not delayed. That could have been big for Ku. That could have meant potentially a mid lane tower, actually. They had been able to get Prey into that mid lane with the Corky. Hit the power spike early, but the reward hasn't been there. Not reaping any turrets that usually the Sorcerer's Shoes Trinity Force purchase should open. And it feels like Ku not hitting timings, SKT ahead of timings, and that's really been. Well, I, they haven't had a chance, really, yeah. to hit any timings with the amount of pressure. How, how do you hit a siege timing with Corky when your mid lane turret is gone and you're being dove and killed in the bottom side? It makes it incredibly difficult. SKT is just knows what those timings are and has nipped them in the bud. Feels like taking that out of turret. You know, we've seen previous series where denying a Varus by stealing blue could be the thing. They're using the teleport hero who they really want this turret. Falling low, but will we see SKT engage? Uh, here we go. There's a flank from Wolf. Big knock up. Gravity Field catches Smeb with some already low on the backside. Kuro tries to get the Petrifying Gaze. Doesn't actually stun anybody, and now Kuro has to run. He's going to fall. Prey Valks out of combat, but that is so far three for none. And Ku trying to commit. They needed to dictate the tempo of this game just a little bit. 
They can't get there. Prey looks like he is going to die in the end as he is found by Bang and Faker. Zoned out by Wolf, and that's going to be a Baron. But of all things, a Wolf flank on Alice is what got the massive engage with the head buff. Hover just wasn't accounted for by Wards. Only one pink ward on the map around the mid lane when they were grouping, when they used their teleport, and the cost is massive. The four kills, and now the, the Baron as well. Well, I actually agree with what Ku was trying to do there. They had to get that mid lane turret down, because if they didn't, the dragon stacking would have been just continued for the end until the end of the game, basically. There was no way for Ku to get control unless that mid lane turret goes down. But flash, um, headbutt, pull right into the center of the team. Triple headbutt, pull, And that's the thing I'm going to say, Monty, is that I agree this is what they needed to do. But you need to prepare. You need to have the wards around your flank. You should never be flanked by, of all things, a support Alistair. Well, they also didn't expect him to come through the lane. Uh, from that angle, and they certainly didn't expect him to be able to flash on his entry to hit them while they had just killed the tower. So Wolf outplayed them for sure. Now Prey going to get fished and dead. And Fizz, Trinity Force Fizz with Baron as well to amplify his sieging. Of course, it's just turret damage really that he's going to get from that. There's no one on this team that can count for it, even though Smeb done very capably in his build. No way he can shop anywhere near this Fizz, and SKT's got everything they wanted from Champions League. Yeah, and it's just so impressive because it's not even that Ku has played this game particularly badly. They just have been overwhelmed by SKT's precision uh, with this composition and their play on the map. There's an inhibitor. They're going to get some damage down onto the bottom inhib turret. Also, but this is, I mean, this is a pretty dominating display from SK Telecom, but Ku has the right ideas. It's just that SKT is better at executing at every single stage, it seems. And that's kind of the scary thing, Monty, is that all the big high-level decisions from Ku have been the correct ones. It's just small mistakes, specifically fighting around bottom when you can't control Victor. Of course, Victor's been completely out of control this game. The moment they took the outer turret and just using his instant wave clear and roaming meant that he roamed first to bottom. And then the small mistake of understanding, okay, we need to make something happen. We need to take this outer turret. Let's use the teleport for it, but not warding your flanks. These small things have just caused SKT to spiral out of control. Over 8,500 gold is the lead at 26 minutes. And this is first versus second. Yeah. And you're talking about it, but they could have just had a, a, a ward right in the middle of the mid lane, back where their tier one could have been, and seen that, seen that wolf coming in. But they just didn't expect him to be there, and they got a little bit desperate. So that shot call was correct, but one ward misplaced means that wolf finds an angle, and that's going to be probably it for this game, as Ku frantically tries to defend. But they're never going to be in a position now, probably, where they can outplay. SK Telecom without a tremendous error from this T1 team. Always playing on the razor's edge against SK Telecom. Even if you make those smart rotations, even if you have the right macro decision making, small, minor, at least should be minor decisions, snowballs the game out of control for SKT. It really is amazing to watch SK Telecom at the moment. Uh, we saw their matches against Jin Air too, where that game two against Jin Air was just nearly flawless snowballing off of some very minor advantages. Same story here tonight. Who just can't face the force of the storm, really. Smeb's holding his own. I mean, Smeb made this pick work into the into the Fizz, honestly. He has at least been able to hold on. And it feels like Ku in general played around the Fizz very well. They yep. ensured that there was never that kind of comical situation we've seen in previous Mario games where he's just solo killing, solo taking down inhibitors and such. They played around that. It's just the other sides, the other lanes of the map, and in general map control has been completely ceded to SKT everywhere except that 1v1 between Smeb and Mara. Yeah, just seems like every time Ku try to make a play, SKT has an answer. They've already thought about those eventualities, and they are prepared to, to come down to that lane to take that fight. And now SK Telecom has that inhibitor down. It's going to take them a few more minutes to close out this game, but they have opened up just a tremendous gold lead from what was once a quite close showdown and a little bit of trading. But Ku Tigers, you know, and we talk about going into these next games. Okay, well, SKT didn't really show us anything besides the Kog'Maw. That's new. Um, everything else, pretty standard for them. Ku, they tried to take away the Janna, the Corky, and the Maokai to see if that would be effective against SKT, but it's just not enough. 
So you get in the coaching box, Munchkos. Of course, you've been a professional coach before. You get in the coaching box. You've watched this game from Pooh. What do you tell your charges? Because it doesn't feel like there's any, you know, quick fix. It feels like just small mistakes, the sort of thing that you can't really account for, especially in the heat of the moment, have just unsettled this team. I think you have to put Kuro on a high wave clear champion to make sure that Faker can't take over the map. And then you start trying to put Prey and Smeb on lane bullies. I think that's the way you come back out of this. You try and get the Kog'Maw for yourself. Here we go, there's a Righteous Glory pop right there. They're gonna try and get it on Faker. Smeb in the back line already. Faker getting locked up. Faker actually goes down right there as Bengi finally gets into the fight. Bang, under threat. Kuro and Smeb chasing after him. There are the Twin Fangs, but the double kill as Marin is just gonna clean up this fight from behind. There is nothing that Ku can do. Marin with the TP into the back line. And he's going to not quite finish off Smeb, it looks like. Smeb may be just a little too much to handle, but that's not going to save Ku's bottom inhibitor. And this is exactly the engage that might have won Ku a different game, but when you're 8 or 9,000 gold behind and Marin shows up with just an embarrassment of items, CDR even, to continue just being so, so sticky, uses the Ignite because they're going to take down Smeb eventually. 7 to 16, soon to be 7 to 17 is the kill score, and Ku have been blown away by SK Telecom. Yes, they have. They can't finish right now. No AD carry, no mid laner to deal the coup de grace. That, that is only a matter of time at this stage. Baron up in another minute, Dragon up in a minute 40. Certainly SK Telecom in prime position to take both of them. It was a good engage from Ku. Take, take down the victor, see if you can make it work. They got both carries, but Marin, as soon as it breaks into a skirmish after a few members are dead, that's where he powers up on this Fizz, and he is just so strong. And the scariest thing about 2015 Summer is we're going to see the replay. Watch the Malkite comes in from the perfect flank wall. They kill Faker. Fizz isn't even at this fight yet, but he's so strong the moment that they join it. We were focused more on what was happening in the back line of SKT. The damage from Fizz is disgusting. Well, also, Prey and Gorilla ended up standing in that chaos storm for a bit too long uh, as they were flanked in there. And even after Faker had died, still ending up in that ability. So a little bit of a misplay, I think, from Brain Gorilla in terms of their positioning. The small point I want to bring up, Monty, is that of course you watched all of the spring season. I was busy with the Chinese League. The one thing I can take away from watching SK Telecom T1 in summer is that when you talk about the team's primary carries, it's always been Faker, whatever version of SKT. T1, Team 2, or K, or whatever the team that Faker was on, it was always about Faker. You'd have to say, the second primary carry of this team is Mara. Absolutely. They give him so much gold uh, relative to most top laners in terms of team percentage, and you know, now he's got a wit's end, and he is playing these carry top laners now like the Fizz. He's starting to step into that role. And when we were talking about top, top laners in uh, champions. We were talking about the likes of Duke, the likes of, of Smeb, the likes of Someday who can play carry champions like Riven. It's not Riven, but Marin makes it work and he can even build the pure carry out. This is not full tank Fizz. This Fizz does a hell of a lot of damage. Yes, it does. So, they're going to back off. Have to, this coup has to use Talisman for trying to threaten this Baron. We see Wisdom setting up for a flank. And can, what is SKT going to do? They're going to break apart just a little bit. Bard actually on his own right now. That is a bit dangerous. Pops the fish early. That's one less damage tool that he has. He's got a frozen heart, though, so he's quite tanky. Whoa! Whoa! With a huge knockup. And that's going to be it straight into the gravity field and chaos storm. Faker just popping down those abilities. What a beautiful CC chain. Marin just baiting them into grouping up, and Wolf just absolutely delivering with the flash. He has been insane on this Alistair this game. Back-to-back -back flashes, the first to win the game, it felt like, after uh, Ku were pushing the mid turret. The second one for the disgusting one, but even prompts a surrender from the Ku Tigers. And SKT, we thought Ku might be their most serious challenge yet, but you wouldn't take it from game one. It is just, I mean, SKT, the level to which they are playing League of Legends these days is absolutely mind-boggling. Wolf was such a hero in that game. He found the angles he needed to initiate for his team, tie him up, and that's going to be a 16-0. SK Telecom T1 breaks their previous win streak in terms of games. They set it here in this league in Champions Winter in 2013-2014. They have now surpassed it, and they are one game away to racking up their 20th best of three win. 1-0 and 16, 17. Their pocket in game number two, SK Telecom on the blue side this game. Grogespan once again 
even though Bengi has been looking actually pretty mechanically sharp on that champion, Wisdom has been such a playmaker early in the game on the Gragas. Smart not to give it up. So Callista, of course, coming through. Bang. There, speaking of professionally undefeated champions, there's another one for Bang. Has never lost a game on Callista. Just feels like SKT are banning away champions. They're not looking to first pick, and they don't want to give away in the first rotation. I notice your surprise at the Victor ban. They clearly don't want to first pick it, and they're just conscious that it feels like Koo will pick it up first rotation. Janna ban, too. Very unusual. As the Rise is banned out on the blue side by SKT, and there is the Alistair. So two bans against Wolf, seeing if they can do something else in that laning phase and perhaps a 2v2. But you have to feel like Bengi's happy to opt into Rek'Sai versus Evelyn once again. This is a matchup that, of course, Watch struggled with on the Evelyn side. In general, Evelyn, newly predictable due to the play of Rek'Sai, but very powerful bottom lane locked in with the first two picks from Koo. Yeah, huge all-in lane. Sivir and Annie very easy to gank. They don't have to be worried about the jungler. Bengi's faces back during champ select. I think he's my favorite player to watch during Champ Select because he always just does the weirdest stuff. Always seems very perturbed and just <laughs> deep in thought. So Corky will be locked in, of course, for Bang. And now, how is Ku going to respond? I would much rather see an Echo here, something that you could really set up with after the Annie stun, try and create some uh, zones with stuns in this game instead of going for the Evelyn. Wisdom is for sure a good Evelyn player, but it's just not as powerful against the Rek'Sai. I feel like you leave the last pick uh, to the top lane. I know that might sound crazy, but you don't want to open up. For example, you could go for Maokai and Echo if you wanted a really strong synergy yep. between the top lane jungle. But then, of course, you open up the Fizz if you take it earlier. And Leona is actually locked in by Wolf. This is a change. This is a very big change, as a matter of fact. So that Leona lock. Something we haven't seen this season so far in Champions. Wolf has played it in the past. Is uh, it a blocker pick to the likes of Varus that, of course, Kuro has been playing? You know, any of these long-range poke champions? You would think that Braum might be better for that, though, is the thing. Oh, I mean, you are forced to be more accountable when the Solar Flare is being thrown out. You can't just sit back at a 1,000 range as uh, Varus. Of course, at max, max range you can, but in general, you're denied from a lot of things. But they must think a mobile backline is going to be the way from Kuro, because otherwise, why would you prioritize so early a second rota rotation, Leona. Reminder that the Ezreal is available too, the Runeglaive as an SK Telecom. Now, they, the Leona is a partial answer to that, but I don't think it's really a great one uh, as a whole. So they need to deal with this Ezreal. And Ku have, they have Annie and Maokai. They will be able to, and they have the flank, they have Sivir. They have everything they need to lock down Ezreal if Faker picks it. You have to think that the Ezreal's coming in. Now, how has SKT dealt with this in the past? They had Maokai. They played mid lane rise. This game, they banned mid lane rise. Is it global time? Is the question? Is there a, I think it is. Thinking about I the think, Shen as well. I think the answer for them is go global, play the side lanes, and prevent SK or Ku from grouping with a very strong poke composition. With the clan summoner change, you have to think it oh is boy. likely to be the Azir. Definitely not one of Faker's strongest champions. Feels like Easy Hood might edge ahead on that particular champion while we saw so much from last season. And the response is an insta lock Kassin. And what a great situation to lock in Kassin when you already have the Sivir for wave clear. And this is a really high win rate champion for Kuro. 4 0, 23 KDA Kassin this season. His Kassin's been very impressive. And it is a good matchup against Azir. My, my concern, Papa Smithy, is that we saw what happened when Ku lost control of mid lane early and SKT just choked the life out of them in the game. And we've seen how when teams like Najan try to play the Kassin, the lack of an early game means that against Azir and Corky, you start setting up that 4-1 split, that siege in the mid game, you're going to lose a lot of towers. And it's going to take so long for this Kassadin to come online. I don't think the Ku Tigers are going to be able to weather the storm of SKT. Let's compliment Ku for the one thing they pulled off. They know they had, they knew they had a really tenuous matchup in top, which of course is actually mirrored here, the Maokai versus Fizz. And they set up the Maokai to actually be ahead of where we expected. With the roaming of the likes of Annie, if Wisdom's on point with the Evelyn, there is enough pressure to rotate through mid lane that maybe they can make it work. But as you mentioned, playing on a razor's edge against SK Telecom, do it at your own peril. I just feel they're making the exact same gamble they made last game, and it just didn't pay off. So it's really going to be up to Gorilla. If they can kill Faker early, maybe they can pull this out and they can get the Cassidy into a good state. But if they can't, 
Could be just a repeat and a quick one for SKT. Let's get into the game and find out. Game two, SK Telecom T1 versus the Koo Tigers. Somebody's best of three win streak will be broken. Koo's Tigers game win streak ended at 13 just a few minutes ago. And who's going to take this one? This is exactly the opposite of what I thought Koo was going to do. Exactly the opposite. I thought they were gonna go for the wave clear mid laner, try and go for some more aggressive uh, champions in the laning phase. At least they have the Sivir Annie versus the Corky. That's pretty nice to have if they end up in standard lanes. Sivir Annie against the Corky is Bengi. Face checks them out, kind of bit of damage, but SKT, they very much rate their level one because they're going in aggressive. They have five people. There's no more stun. It was used just on Bengi. There's going to have to be a flash. Smev takes it. Ignite used by Wolf, but that was dangerous for Ku. Gorilla just using that stun early, and then SKT piled on through. But you were talking about the Siva Annie and the fact that they should win the 2v2 lane matchup. That's where the good news ends for this Koo Tigers lineup. Fizz versus Maokai, a famous Fizz counterpick matchup against the Maokai. Rek'Sai versus Evelyn. Every time we see this matchup, unless the team really plays well as a unit, Rek'Sai's going to come up ahead just because she's so much, she's so much more able to make the Evelyn accountable in a sort of skirmish situation. And it's Cassidan who. He's, he's going to do capably against the Azir, but until the later levels, can't really boss him around. Yeah, and that's the key point here. When we get to Corky and Azir's power spike, and we have to see what exactly happens in that particular situation when they start to group and seed. And <laughs> that was pretty much your face as we were uh, in that champion select. That was, that was my face in the champion select for sure. <laughs> Looking at it upside down, didn't make it any better reading for Ku. I mean, it has to be Wisdom, right? This is the guy they picked for early pressure. Unless he can create that early pressure, we're going to be talking about a Trinity Force power spike, Azir getting some items, and Kasten still going to be powering up with the Rod of Ages. Yeah. Well, they're going to get their top laners up into that top side right now. Marin has blue buff. Marin level 2. Smeb still only level 1. So not an auspicious start for Smeb if he wants to maintain an even lane in the early game. Wasn't able to create any saplings because course had to use his flash yep. on the invade. So much. The fact when you're out jungled at level 1 by a Fizz as Maokai lets you know that SKT made the smarter rotations at level 1. Yeah, they certainly did. Nice invade there, of course, on the Raptor side making sure for the second game in a row that Smeb couldn't actually get any kind of advantage. So now, just with that, they have an edge in the 1v1 in top lane, and they're trying to compound that with the blue buff at the moment. And there's no lane swap, so this, I mean, Gro's gonna have to be very creative about how he tries to kill Faker in the mid lane, especially through that cleanse. Commended Ku on having strategies around keeping Maokai up. Remember, he had blue buff in the 1v1 matchup in bottom lane. Now he's against a blue buff in the 1v1 matchup. So he didn't get the lane swap. The enemy laner has blue. Marin usually will only get ahead on Fizz around levels 5 to 6, but even at level 3 with blue, big laning advantage against the Maokai. Yeah, you're looking at the 21 and 1 from Bang. That's actually just in champions. Uh, if we include international competition, he's 26 and 1. Uh, so that is a little bit skewed. Prey, obviously, with a higher deep damage per minute. They usually rely on Prey as more of a damage threat than SKT does with their AD carry when they have Faker and Marit on the team. So it's a little bit different in who has to step up and put on their carry pants when the game starts. But for all that reliance on uh, Prey, an interesting stat I came up with is that 10 minutes, and this is probably expected in the best team in the league that's only lost two games, bangs ahead 127.7 gold in his opponent, by far the highest in the league. You might think, okay, Ku's been winning a lot of games. They look on Prey to carry. He might must be at least, you know, comparable to that number. He's actually 54 gold down. Second bottom in the league, only above Nuclear from Spenu. Actually below, for example, Sungyun from Anarchy. His laning phase this season. Okay, Gorilla likes to pack up and leave, but they haven't been going. Ideally. All right, Bang actually going to get uh, stunned up here. Has to use the heal, has to use the flash. There we go, and Prey will get first blood in the 2v2. That is the danger of this Sivir and this Annie together, but looks like Wolf will pick one up in return. Gets the ignite, 
and the kill, but that is a favorable trade for sure for the Koo Tigers. Prey and Gorilla going aggressive early, landing the necessary stun, and all summoners except for Wolf's Flash blown in that lane. I guess the one thing we overlooked in Champion Select is that Leona has always had a favorable laning matchup against the Annie. Isn't going to be... So when you're Annie, you can choose to just burst down the squishy supports. Leona, definitely not the definition of squishing. It's very tanky, also amplifies damage. And Corky Leona, this is an old bully lane where you'd be able to rapidly apply that Leona passive with the Gatling gun. So. Looks like they just want to duel 2v2. Maybe that's why we see the standard lanes. They're very happy to opt into what proved to be, for a lot of lanes, a very tough 2v2 lane matchup to come up against the Siva Annie. Yeah, well, interesting times that uh, you're right that Ku would actually pull out with a victory there. We didn't see the start of the engagement or uh, which abilities were on cooldown. Probably Bang misplayed something right there, which is why we saw that trade go. But Marin is being very devious and freezing the lane very close to his turret, making it as difficult as possible for Smeb to survive. Smeb has done a good job of holding his own in this matchup, at least in the last game, but you know, Papa, I'm not sure I opt into this one if I'm the Koo Tigers. Marin's been so dangerous in this matchup. You know, they gave him the tools to succeed with the blue buff. Now he has the deep freeze. Of course, Smeb does have good range pushing options with the arcane smash and the sapling, but this matchup's only gonna get worse and worse for Smeb, so that's why it's important that Prey picked up the first spot, got some sort of an advantage rolling in bottom, because they will not be able to look to top for any sort of advantage. This wisdom can really make something happen. Yeah, they're trying to prompt the all-in with Marin hitting six. Smeb gonna hit six at the same time. Start using his ult. Marin no mana, though, so very unlikely that it's going to be an all-in, and so that'll be just a push straight into the turret. Marin has to go back eventually, but in the meantime, actually, he's lost all his pressure without that mana. Has a lot of money, but he's going to lose some CS in the end uh, because he's just not going to be able to push this lane out versus this Maokai at this point. So I noted your fatherly like disapproval of the cast and pick and the lack of wave control. Surprising that Kuro has kind of amplified this knock on for the Blasting One start that we see a lot of laners pick up, say, Blasting One, Sapphire Crystal, Blasting One, Ruby Crystal, just to have some semblance of pushing ability, maxing that Force Pulse against Azir. You cede even more laning control over to Azir when he opt into the Catalyst first. Yeah, I, I would love to see how much Faker's damage Faker's actually been able to chip off the mid lane turret, if any. Kuro actually has been doing a good job of bullying. We have seen Faker at relatively low HPs. But then why the Catalyst? Yeah, great, great question. I, Wonder the same thing. Maybe he just wants to play a little bit more passively now that level six has come down for Faker. A little bit more concern, perhaps, with the ganks from Rek'Sai. But Kuro still just holding back to the turret, using that catalyst for the sustain. But fortunately for Kuro, hardly any damage on the mid lane tower yet. So it's definitely not going bad for him. But he's got a long way to go. That's the problem. You need to get two to three core items on Cassidy before he becomes useful whatsoever. So we talk about wave control. We talk about the lane control that SKT's picked for. You might not see it from the CS, but the Observer was smart and showing. Just because there's no lane pressure uh -oh. from a Cassidy early, as we're waiting to see if... Oh, oh. actually steals it away. Very nice. 50 gold comes through. But the pink wards are sticking because cassidy has been pushed up, because Maokai has been forced to be accountable. The vision around the river massively in the advantage of SKT. Well, as usual, right? That's yep. uh, something that is almost always true of SK Telecom. Pink wards on either flank for Faker, so that he can start to move this needle and start to get some more gold. Kasten's actually been forced to max the Force Pulse first. He's actually, sorry, the Null Sphere first. Ooh, so he's a very good. defensive choice. The wave clear with Blasting One, maybe that's why he's gone for the Catalyst. It's, it's just completely that he wants to stay in lane and stay healthy rather than having any hope of trying to control the lane with maxing force balls, which is what we see basically 100% of the time ever since the last round of changes to Cassie. Yeah, indeed. So Wisdom's still on the top side here, clearing out the Krugs. He's trying to be there in case Smeb needs him. You can tell that Wisdom is totally playing around Smeb this game. Meanwhile, Bengi much more concerned with Faker's safety in the laning phase and his ability to push and start to take out some turrets. Pretty passive early game so far. Bengi just going to sweep out a ward with the pink. Bottom side, River. Prey and Gorilla are here still, and they are not having any troubles in terms of farming, but we just see a slight edge opening for SKT, mostly thanks to CS leads in the top and mid lanes. 
slight edge with an earlier power spike is the asterisk I have to put next to that. I mean, dragons won't become easier as Bang starts to complete items towards his Trinity Force, but there's just no, I mean, no way for Wisdom to even get close to this area. He's going to face check it now. Yeah, he's going to see it. What can he do here? Can he make a play? He doesn't have pressure in mid or bot, and he can't get there, and he gets seen with the Tremor sets. Clever from Bengi just to pop underground right as that goes down, but that's going to be a dragon handed to Ku. Wisdom swaps into the bottom side, and there's no chance of aggression for Marin either because Maokai's so close to his turret, so there's really nothing that could be taken. I mean, it was smart of Bengi just to go underground right before he was within smite range to make sure that wasn't going to get stolen but it gets stolen anyway. Very fortunate pathing time from Wisdom. He just happened to be there, and as you mentioned, because he was doing the damage in the um, unborrowed form, he was able to just, Marin takes a nice little burst, but he was able to you know, be deceived until the last moment, as you mentioned, smart of him to borrow, get the information that Wisdom was around at the cost of the dragon, but perhaps not the biggest concern 11 minutes into the game. All right, Gorilla's here. There's the Twisted Advance. Marin's going to dodge that. Fish goes down. There's the Timbers. Do they have the follow-up? Smeb has no mana. Has to flash Arcane Smash. Gorilla gets the kill. No Ignite needed. And that is some more help for Smeb. They really have been camping for him in this series. And they're rotating around him with a directed, targeted CC. Good engage by Gorilla. Unique thing about top lane Fizz, doesn't get to max the playful tricks to first, so much more counterplay. 15 base seconds on that cooldown and able to get caught, as I can see that a Nashor's Tooth straight up has been completed by Fake. We have not seen this item on an Azir in, in quite some time. That's not a Stinger, that's a Nashor. Yeah, I know. That's very, that's very odd, actually. As far as I know, it doesn't apply on the Sand Soldiers. That was, of course, the interaction, the PBE that really uh, merited this item is that, of course, gave you the 20% CDR and made those Sand Soldiers do insane damage. There's a reason that people stopped at the Stinger is that you didn't get the extra on-hit damage on the Sand Soldiers. So, curious first buy. So much instant pressure, though. And, of course, Kuro has the Rod of Ages and has to uh, deal with that stacking time. Uh, I think this is just a buy against the Cassid and something that he's prepped so that he can get more damage down and clear the waves. <laughs> Uh, pretty casually here, but it is quite curious indeed. A Null Sphere Max Cassidan against a Nashor's Tooth or Rush Azir. This certainly was not the smart tip by anyone for this no, series. No, 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 not at all. Well, they're standing in a ward there. Looks like there's a ward bug. They can't actually tell that Ku Tigers can see them right now. Uh, Gorilla does not have... Okay, there we go. And they're going to go in with the Solar Flare. TP's coming in. There's no... Uh, actual really resistance here from the Ku Tigers. Bray's gonna get caught out, has the spell shield up, it goes down, but there is the Fizz with the fish. Kuro down, can Kuro clean this up? They're all low, Smeb still here. They can maybe re-engage this, but Faker coming in for a possible dive, just coming in from behind. Two versus five in the bottom lane. And looks like Smeb and Kuro are gonna have to go back three for nothing. That was a really weird vision. They had the vision advantage, though, Monty, from that vision bug, as I, you mentioned. I don't know if they knew they were there or not. I don't see why they would be in range of a solar flare without the Tibbers up, if that was the case. Well, the scary thing to me was, let's say they did opt into it. They lost the trade 3-4 with the extra information. One thing I'll note, Maokai was the first to channel his teleport. It looked like they had some semblance of idea, but a massive win for SKT and Kuro, taking a lot of damage from Fakers. Nashor's Tooth, uh, Azir. Wow, this is, that was a quite odd fight. It, I mean, Gorilla gets caught out very early on and they don't have a really good way to respond to it. Gorilla just dead before he can do anything. There's the TP channel. And yeah, Maokai by far has the advantage with the teleport, but still, Prey is so low at this point. Mara can just choose out Wisdom, knowing the other two members would fall. Three for O. We're only speculating. It looks like maybe there was no vision granted whatsoever by that ward as we come to live. And Cassidy today. And so is Gorilla. Now Marin going to pursue this under the tower. Easily taken with the help of the Chilling Smite. Faker actually pushing the Sand Soldiers through to secure the kill for himself. Not sure how Cassidy managed to die there with both summoners up. More and more junglers are opting into this Evelyn versus Rek'Sai matchup. And I'm sorry, it does not work out. We're going to see the replay. All oh, right. Hasn't used any CC yet. OK, of course, the CC train, well known. My goodness. Oh. Wow, the knockup into the the uh, the Rek'Sai knockup, just a perfect combo. Uh, that's been what's so scary about SKT in this series, is how well they chain their 
crowd control together. It is nearly flawless. It was a stun into a bouncy castle into Dan. Wow. That is very good coordination around all of their CC abilities. You might be forgiven for thinking this is a replay of game one because they've taken that out of turret early once again. Two out of turrets down. Evelyn getting invaded. And just how do you get back into this game if you're Koo? This is what you mentioned the moment we saw Kasten locked in. The downside of the Kasten pick is you're never going to have any hope of controlling waves around mid lane if you're the Kasten team. I mean, the, the edge you have is maybe you can get to a roam just a little bit faster thanks to your rip walk, but it does cost a lot of resources, a lot of mana to make that happen. And the vision advantage again, just total control. And this game, it's not like the last one where Smeb and Marin were relatively even. This one, it is Marin 30 CS up, two kills up, and starting to get quite scary on that Viz, even though he went for the Merc Treads home guard early here. And even though in the previous game, Smeb was picking up the kills, he was actually consistently 25 CS down. So the CS difference, as you mentioned, is about the same, but the gold difference is that Marin is going to be markedly ahead of his opponent as Ku once again. Their only strategy this game has been camp Marin at every opportunity. Yeah, here they go. There's the Silver Old Pop. Marin in a world of hurt. Can they give it over to Smeb? They can. One last punch to the fish's face. And he goes down. So they're going to try and turn this into a turret. Seems like they'll be able to. Sacrificing the dragon. Smart move from Ku. They got the first dragon here. What they need is that immediate goal to just kind of bootstrap them back into this game. Pick them up. But Bang responding at a tier two means Kuro going to have to go clear this one out. Even on a simple level, Monty, they need to at least in in engage a trade. They would not have got a dragon fight when we're talking about the earlier power spikes from the SKT comp. Bang has Trinity Force. Faker already went for about as much early power as possible with the Nashor's Rush. They wouldn't have been able to contest dragons, so at least they force a trade of some sort of resource. Right, and in the preferable way that will help them in the early and mid game, too. Before that 6%, AP and AD really starts to get working. And they already have it, remember, because they took the first yep. dragon, smartly stolen away from Wisdom, contesting Bengi's solo earlier this game. Well, still a long, long way to go for the Koo Tigers. Uh, you can see the QSS second, actually, on Bang this game, just trying to prioritize his ability to escape from the likes of Smeb, Wisdom, and Gorilla. Maybe not a bad idea. He's got to be able to be mobile so that he doesn't just get burst down by Cassidy and should he get hit by some crowd control. And there's not a lot of armor yet. Uh, Smeb really the only one with any armor to speak of. Ku and Wisdom going for just what I assume will be an Aegis. I have to think so. Wisdom might be building one himself. Only just has the Ruby Crystal at this present point. It's the last outer turret. And SKT rotating around it. They want to break this outer ring of turrets. Okay, well, Faker can just keep moving up the mid lane just like he did last time. Cover his flank with an Azir turret. Keep the pressure on. The map pressure, it's symbolized in this mini map. Four pink wards on the map to zero from Ku Tigers. Well, that's exactly why I was concerned about this Cassidy and Nick. This is not the direction that I think the Ku Tigers should have gone with this draft. Certainly, Kuro strong on this, but. They, I don't think they saw the reason exactly why they were losing that last game. You just can't compete with how much heat pre, uh, Faker can put on the mid lane and how much of an effect that has. It just ripples outward across the rest of the map. They need Kuro to be able to answer it. And the champions that should always have teams trading advantages, for example, Fizz versus Maokai is what SKT opts into. That's a winning lane matchup for Fizz. So you feel like Ku should be able to, just with the nature of pick ban, get something of their own. And although Cassidy can be a winning lane matchup against uh, the Azir, we're talking about after a certain point in the game, after about, say, 10 to 15 minutes, that's the first 15 minutes of the game where SKT often win and lose their games, or in general this season, win them all. They want to go for Bang right here, but they don't really have the angle. Faker still there. TP coming in from SKT right behind them. They're going to dive. This Gorilla gets bounced around and nearly instantly killed. Bang pops the QSS to get out of the Tibbers. Wisdom here on the side, but five members of SKT still diving this turret. Double kill for Faker. Marin going to fish himself another one. Wolf just standing there tanking the turret on the dive. Kuro there again too late. Faker with the priority on the rotation gets to the turret and they execute a very nice dive. And here comes the rest of it. Smeb will fall. Kuro has nowhere to go as Fizz Marin completes the ace. 
Wow. Who getting out rotated in game one was their death. Now, specifically, that was when Cassiopeia had a turret taken down and Victor could walk as he pleases. Remember, this is a Cassidy getting out rotated by SKT. Map pressure, having those pink wards up, just made them so well and so easy to able to take a massive team fight victory. They get that last out of turret. Once again, they have everything. Yeah, look at this. I mean, just it takes so long for Gorilla to get the Tibbers, and he has to drop it on Bang, who already has the QSS. Yeah, Wisdom was in position, remember, anticipating a gank of their own from Ku. But SKT, they're everywhere at once, and they win easily. Yeah, they do. So just pulling out for a moment, they see Kuro, Smeb and Kuro absolutely cannot defend this 2v5. Uh, also, Smeb just doesn't have a lot of MR yet at this juncture, so he gets shredded by this Stinger and the Corky Rockets. I don't even know what Kuro was hoping for. Remember, he doesn't even have five points in Force Pulse at this point. He can't even hope to clear the wave, whatever his AP situation. So just donating more kills over to SKT. He's just astounding how much better SKT is than every other team in this league so far. Uh, there's, I mean, Koo Tigers, by their own right, had been on this 13-game win streak, but they are getting absolutely crushed in this best of three. Feels like every time we big up a contender to SKT. Ha, they're only pretenders. <laughs> they're only pretenders. They're chopped down every time. My last cast actually was SKT versus Jin at that. At the time was 1v2. SKT took that down, but of course we even had the cliff note. Who's looking really good lately? And of course they went on a big winning streak since then. That's right, SKT. KT is the next one. KT, are we on the KT hype train? Here we go. Straight to 0 2, Phil. There's a reason why this team monopolizes the power rankings, also the global power rankings. This team, since MSI. Oh, geez. Well, Baron's already there after the solar flare lands and ignites. So Maran just going to go on a little bit of a chase right here. Wisdom just dies to the damage over time. Yeah, since MSI, they've been definitely keeping their roster a lot more consistent. Many more Faker games. Easy Hoon definitely been on the bench. Tom only been sent. Rarely sighted, absolutely. This starting lineup, though, very impressive. Well, you can see Kuro just struggling as against this, as you say, impressive lineup. And not even with the Zonias yet. Faker gets a Zonias of his own. Very interesting build. I'm gonna have to do the math on this build after this game because I am just, I am very surprised about this Nasher's tooth. Kuro came into this series with a higher KDA than Faker, but let's see how much that's really I meant am. this series. Yeah, Kuro was number three in the league. He was only behind Bang and Wolf in KDA. He was sitting at 6.9 prior to game one. Wolf and Bang were both at 8.2. I've been very impressed with Koro for the majority of this season. After quite a poor performance in the LCK Finals last season, got blown away by Easy Hearn that time, but it feels like when he reaches this top, top opposition, just doesn't have an answer, and it feels like the champion picks certainly haven't helped him. Yeah, it, the picks, I think, were the really big part of this, this series, Papa Smithy, because we know Kuro has a pretty large champion pool. It's not like he could just play Victor or something like that. He does have other options. And with this last pick, he could have opted into. Remember, the Ezreal was available here. Certainly, that goes against the grain of what I was saying in terms of early game pressure. But he could have had a Varus, which could have done OK against the Azir, at least had some poke, some harass, maybe done a little bit more, at least had more wave clear at the very least. But do you opt into a Varus when you've seen the Leona and you know the Fizz is there as well? It's risky to go for anything immovable, so then where are the options? What's left? He went with the cast and it has the laning matchup, but you discount the fact that we're talking about Bengi on Rek'Sai. We're talking about this jungle mismatch, and Bengi's around the game again. Yeah. I also wonder what would have happened with an Echo instead of this Evelyn. Even though Wisdom has had very good Evelyn games, uh, it seems like it just hasn't given him enough versatility. The Smurfs all alone. There's a bit of combat. It's not going to mean much. The rest of the team is backing away. Kuz funneled into a choke against Faker. And that means Kuro just has to run basically out of the fight right now. Smeb somehow gets away. Prey may not be so lucky with the chilling smite on him. He's going to be zipping away, but that's a kill for Bengi. And Kuro falling back to the base. Wisdom dying once again to the damage over time from Fizz, creating a very beautiful corpse inside his own base. And SK Telecom has the chance just to turn onto this Baron and win the game. And they give away picks that have really rocked other teams. Remember, Wisdom's 
Uh, Evelyn against CJ enters basically solo one game two off the bat of back of his own ganking pressure. Smash's gonna teleport through, but this is gonna be a titanic requirement to stop this Baron. Well, it's not gonna be enough. SKT easily turn on to him, but it was a desperate play to prevent this Baron from going down at an 11k gold deficit here at 25 minutes. SKT secure the Baron, just back out. This feels like KDA stats, win rates, just don't mean much when you're playing against an SK Telecom team. In game one, we talked about the fact that Ku, you know, their, their big, their macro strategies were very good. They made a couple of small mistakes. They probably made more mistakes here, but the results almost identical game on game. Yeah. Yeah, well, Wisdom just getting chased out of his own jungle. Everyone very under-itemized at the moment. Marin going for the Blade of the Rune King. Didn't pick up that item last game, actually. Went more tanky and then into a wit's end. But this time, he wants that split push. He's much more confident this game about winning versus that Maokai than he could have been in the last one. Felt like he defaulted to tank items after he kind of fell behind in terms of gold compared to Smeb, who was picking up kills and was competitive in CS. Certainly not competitive in CS. 80 CS advantage here for the Fizz. We're going to see Banky take a lot of damage. Yeah, gets caught out, but Smeb landed the Solar Flare on right on his head. Kuro gets pushed out, has to zone use immediately. Faker zone using under the turret as well. Faker going to fall, actually. It was a little bit too deep as Prey picks up the kill streak on him. But that is going to be... It looks like enough of a defense, at least for the moment. Smeb coming back up with his home guards in about 15 seconds should be just enough for Ku to hold on to their inhibitor turret and prevent SK Telecom from cracking the base. Yeah, Bang was guarding the barrened up cannon minion with his life, but eventually had to relent because of the respawn timers. They're not able to break the outer turret in the mid lane, but Marin's gonna keep highly on the gold. Play the Rune King finished, and I guess it's gonna be the Frozen Heart third this time. Yeah, third instead of second. I guess that's sufficient for his tankiness. Well, Ku, at least they're the bright side is they're not really going to be threatening any kind of fifth dragon anytime in the near future. So SKT can just, they've got at least a small, extraordinarily small chance to defend, but realistically SKT can just dive pretty much at any point. And is this the time when we start re-evaluating Marin as a player and you're ranking on Marin in terms of the power top laners in champions? We talked about the likes of his opponent today, Smeb, Someday, and Duke as really, uh, the top top laners and now that he's showing a carry champion like this and you can't disagree it's played the ruin king trinity force he's showing that he has the carry potential to go with his very uh very strong tank role play with the likes of rumble and malka yeah he's certainly d diversifying in a very scary way and the rumble also not really it was banned in game one of this series but something that people are very concerned with Smeb gets locked up by the solar flare he is dead instantaneously Wisdom, the next to fall in the front line, Marin goes, but Mount, Face of the Mountain actually going to save him from the Ignite, popped by Gorilla. So that is one more member of SKT left alive. He's just going to recall, come right back in as soon as he's able to cross the map with his home guard boots. And here is a devastating siege incoming from SK Telecom. We're gonna see Bang just freely autoing. Fizz doesn't have teleport, so can't be there instantly. Nine seconds for Smeb and Wisdom to come back means the game probably won't end here, but just the way we've been speaking, it's kind of been over for about a good 10 minutes. Yes, yes it has been. These games have been very quick and really the only team to give SK Telecom a run for their money, at least out of the top six teams in Korea, has been Jin Air. They nearly won that game two a few weeks ago. Uh, didn't do so well in the rematch of that series, but this is one hurdle and probably the biggest one for their undefeated season. It's a crazy scene where what they'll go 13 and 0 after this series. The only team to really give them a run for the money in a series is probably Samsung. They probably had the best series against <laughs> SKT and that's a crazy thing to think about and you can of course question how seriously SKT were taking that series. Speaking of serious, wisdom is very dead. Jeez, that damage coming out of Marin is absolutely massive. Handing a red buff to him, just to add that little more true damage to put him over the top. And now, 
SKT do not need any help to put over the top. They're definitely the John Cena <laughs> of this league. They just do a lot of winning. They very rarely lose. And when they lose, pretty questionable. All right, Varn caught out by a timber. Is Willie actually fall? No. We see the Emperor's Divide coming through defensively. Smep tries to go in, but he falls. They get Faker with some burst, but not before losing the Maokai. And they can just keep on pushing right here. They still have the Corky to apply the damage to the turret. They don't even have a minion wave prepped. In fact, there's a minion wave pressing against them in the top lane, but it doesn't matter when you're so far ahead. 16,000 gold at 30. here's the TP. Marin just showing right back up. He's on top of the turret already, going back to dive prey in the back line, forcing everybody off, giving Bang some more time. There's a fish, and there is a dead fish also. Wow, Marin, maybe getting a little bit too greedy. A different game where they weren't so far ahead. The fact that they've been really neglecting their minion waves, the fact that there is great scaling towards the late game would be comfort for Kua. Smep actually activates his home guards, but not going to get anywhere near SKT. No, he is not. Well, uh, we have officially passed the flame horizon for Mar in this game at the 30 minute mark. He is 100 CS over Smeb's Maokai. And I, I question also the wisdom. You know what's so scary about Marin uh -huh. is that if you don't ban the Fizz, you're in trouble. Because the problem with Marin is if you if you leave both Maokai and Fizz up, well, we've seen he is undefeated professionally on Fizz, and he only plays it into this matchup. Yep. So you have to be worried about that. But if you if you don't take Maokai, he's 23 and one on Maokai. So he seems to just own whatever side of these two champions you get on. And how, how do you stop that unless you actually spend a ban on his pocket fizz? And then who knows what SKT is going to get at that point? Are they going to get, especially when you're on red side, are they going to get Callista? Are they going to get Alistair? I mean, it's a lot of possibilities that you don't want to consider. And how about this happy scenario? You ban away both, and then he's uh, he's pretty good at that rumble character. I don't know yeah. if you've heard of that one, but I feel like Marin might have uh, played that a few times as well. Yeah, exactly. It's very difficult to handle SKT in a draft these days. More bands, please, Rita. <laughs> so Wisdom's in a really nice flank All spot. All right, yeah. they're going to go for it, but Bang just going to Valk over the wall. Bengi gets caught early. Smeb on top of him with that twisted advance, and they're actually going to turn this around. Baker uses the Emperor's Divide. There are the rockets coming in, but the cleanup from Bang, he's free autoing just behind the wall, and Smeb gets onto Bang, but there's the QSS once again, and a double kill from Bang, who is just so protected. Triple kill, quadra kill, and are they going to get the Penta? Marin wants to hand it over. Gorilla, gonna get fished. Gorilla, gonna get the Penta, Penta kill. for Bang. That is SK Telecom's first Penta of the season. They are answering it, our second Penta in the last couple of days, and Bang just handed that one on a silver platter. Ku was doing everything they could. They had to engage, they had to play aggressively, they tried, but Faker's wall made it so Bang just had Three auto attacks, and that'll be the game. SK Telecom defeats the Goo Tigers 2-0. They extend their game win streak to 17. They extend their best of three win streak to a shocking 20 here as they look to complete this season undefeated. And they are only one series against KT away from locking up World's Qualification. This SK Telecom T1 comp, even having the cherry on the top, giving Bang that Penta got everything they wanted here today. Well, I thought it would be closer than this, Papa Smithy. I thought SKT would win, but I didn't think it would be so incredibly decisive in a 2-0 fashion. And there's just no excuses. You can look back